Hi there everyone, Nathan here from Mighty Lancer Games and today uh, we're going to do some unboxing and uh, showing off some new fantastic products. I think we might need a little bit more light on the situation, might we? Yeah, maybe. Let's... Can you? Okay, you'll try and make it right. Right, so uh, yesterday we got a fantastic box full of uh, products through from Spellcrow in Poland and uh, they've contacted us, they'd like us to stock their products in our store. So we asked, well they offered us some sample products and we said yes please. And then yesterday it arrived and we got a nice big box full of stuff, which I've got here at the side of me. And uh, this in on the table here is just one of the items out of the box. So we're going to go through and we're going to open a couple of these up and see what's what. And uh, show you the quality of the miniatures and the castings and what have you and uh, discuss a bit of pricing and then we'd like your feedback on whether you think that we should maybe take these into store and see if we can uh, provide an extra range for you. So we're going to start off with this so that uh, the main kind of product range as far as we uh, understand is a war game or a skirmish game called Umbra Turris and uh, it's got a whole load of fantasy figures to go along with it. And this is one of their little faction boxes. So this is a complete one player set of miniatures for the game. And this is the Hobgoblin set. And you can see that there's six little uh, figures in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and uh, have a look at the figures. So we've not, not taken any of these out of the packet yet. We've just had a good look through. There you go. Slice that. And let's see what we've got inside here. So there's no... Uh, no instructions or anything or paperwork or any other bits and pieces in here it's just literally a box of figures now uh, let's start with this guy. Shove that out of the way so this box of figures the RRP on this little box is 25 pounds and uh, oh look it's a spelker on their little baggies made in Poland due to small parts the product is not recommended for children under 36 months that's fair enough. Comes with a uh, 25 millimeter square slotted base, cool. and then uh, they're all on resin miniatures, as far as I'm. Um... Okay. Yep. Absolutely. No, no, we didn't. No. So this is uh, this is like the little chieftainy guy, I guess. This guy here. Um, yeah, that, that guy. This guy, sorry, he's this guy here at the front. Uh, so he's got a couple of different hand options, it looks like. So you can either give him a crossbow or a nice big cleavery sword. And uh, a walking stick in his other hand. He looks pretty cool. And the quality of the resin looks really, really nice. So that's that guy. Let's uh, shove him out of the way. <laughs> what kind of games do you think that these would be good for now that you've opened up one whole packet? Yeah, well I think yeah. I think that these would probably be suitable for like any fantasy uh, what scale game. Uh, 28 millimeter, 32 millimeter, something like that. Compatible with most other fantasy uh, war games I would guess. So this is a little, uh, oh he's that guy, that's like the little uh, uh, fanatic -y looking chap, jumping off his spear, leaping in the air, he's pretty cool. The resin looks a little bit glossy, I guess these guys, I don't know how they're going to uh, paint up, if anybody's painted any spell crow figures before, I guess they're going to need a really good wash before you start, like any resin figure. But. Uh, Really cool, really nice. Chuck him over there. Who's this guy? Ah, this is this is this little chap here down the front, maybe. I'm getting all these totally wrong. That's not him at all. Who's he? Ah, he's this guy. <laughs> he's this chap here. It's difficult to uh, see what's going on, I think. But this is this is his right hand with this kind of plague sensor thing here there and uh, yeah, his body and then he's got a staff 
which looks more like a little club or something in the photo, but it's only because the bottom end of this haft is curved behind his back. It was great. Just they're really full of character, really nice. This is uh, possibly my favourite figure so far out of the box. This is this chap here in the bottom corner with his big two-handed sword thing. There. The, uh, the quality of the resin looks really good. This guy? Is that better? Yeah, I can see that. Okay, so yeah, the, the quality of the resin looks really, really nice. Right, so what else have we got in this little set? Oh, we've got this uh, this chap up here with his little uh, thing. So he looks ideal to be like a night goblin shaman or something like that if you were using them for an alternative game system. Excellent. And uh, last one, which is this chap here in the middle at the bottom with his little uh, lantern on a pole and what have you. His little spell potions, he's maybe a wizard or something. They look pretty good. I'm impressed with those. I'm impressed with those. We'll stick that to one side and let's move on to the next one. The next box that we've got are uh, another starter faction. They are gnomes. Let me move it up into the right place so you can see it. So these, this is the gnome set. We'll, we'll crack this open and we'll have a quick look at these guys as well. Now this one's got a little flyer in it. So this is... A uh, little advertising 28mm fantasy miniature line, it says there. And this is uh, just like a little advertising blurb for some of the figures. So there's that chap that's in the uh, in that set that we've just looked at, this guy with the two-handed sword. And uh, we've got a couple of these other figures that we'll, we'll show you. And then they do some like different terrain pieces as well. Some The obligatory barrels. Uh, they've got some paintbrushes, it looks like, trench set bases, these weird little cactus things and funguses. They look pretty cool. Right, let's uh, get that over there. Let's have a look at some gnomes. Yeah, do the honours. Right. Well, oh, these, these bags look to have more figures in. So we've got this little uh, engineer chap with his fancy rifle, he's smoking a pipe, he looks pretty good. Let's get the pictures back in so you can see the colourised version. So here's this guy down at the front there, he looks, uh, he looks fun. We've got uh, this other chap from the bottom row, uh, like a dwarf slayer type with a, uh, a big throthing mug of beer he's, uh, he's great hopefully you can see these alright you know, give Mrs MLG the challenge of focusing me now yeah, yeah. If, I, if I move that out of the way can you see the detail any better? I think you can see the detail quite well yeah. see the detail quite well and then uh, and then we've got this lady down here at the bottom, the uh, large lady with the big spear and the owl. She's pretty pretty funky. Excuse me. We've got the uh, the Valkyrie lady up there. Really nice. I wonder how, they, I wonder how they're doing this resin casting for these because... What, what's up? You're looking at himself, I'm not sure. Uh, I, am, I am sorry, it's the first time I've seen him, I'm excited. <laughs> so, uh, the the detail looks absolutely fantastic, really nice, really crisp. It's uh, it's cool. This, uh, what, what kind of pricing is it then? So, the, so these are, these two sets, the RRP is £25. And, uh, I don't think that's unreasonable for resin figures of this kind of quality. We're used to paying sort of five to six pounds a figure, I think, for uh, for most things of of fair quality. And there's the final chap, a little uh, thane or ranger or whatever, with his little crossbow. He looks pretty good. So let's 
put those over to one side. <laughs> we'll, we'll put them away properly later. Uh, right, so let's show you uh, a couple of other things. So these are a couple more box sets. Uh, so this first one is Stones. Now this set would be an RRP of £19.50. And uh, what I think it actually just contains is 110 stones for decorating your bases. And uh, indeed it does. Just have lots and lots of various size stones for you to clip off and decorate your uh, scenic bases. Now, there appears to be three variations there of, of different like stone design so you get 110 pieces that would be an hour of 19 pound 50 so whether you uh, you want to buy some resin stones to put on your bases or you want to uh, maybe don't want to pay for them but anyway the option is there and then this one which i think is probably pretty cool pretty funky maybe a little bit more useful is uh, mushrooms so this is the same it would be 19 pound 50 and uh, this has got 108 different mushrooms in There's, uh, in a variety of sizes for you to use to decorate your bases or your scenery um, and again there's a, a few different ones so there's some quite large ones there there's little kind of toadstool mushrooms there's some blob fungus and uh, multi stalked ones and things on there. Oh, this is the yeah, yeah. So, just a whole array of different things. They're all in like the same high quality resin that we've seen on the other figures. They all look pretty great. Chat not, not too sure about the stones. No, I'm not too sure about the stones. If I'm perfectly honest, but I think, but I think the mushrooms look fantastic. Right then, let's have a quick flip through the uh, rule book. So this is, if you can see this, might have mm -hmm. to move the camera a bit, little bit out so you can I see it better. I can't. It's can't we? Out as it is okay. Me. So if you can, yeah, see it on the bottom of my screen. But oh, there we go. Oh, it's like you're on a magical yeah. mystery ride now. Yeah. Right then. So this is the uh, this is the rule book and the rule book for the game, and and I've not looked through this yet at all. But uh, this little hardback rule book, if you can see there, so it's a little hardback, and it's even got a little ribbon in for you to keep your page, that uh, is nine pounds. Right? So, uh, and it's written in English, and it's got some beautiful illustrations. It's all black and white. All black and white. And uh, you know, there's a map of the area. This is like really nicely illustrated, and uh, let's see if we can have a look at. See if we can find some stat lines or something so we can see what's what. Combat rules, roll to hit rules, magic. So there's magic things. So. Let's just have a look here. Fireball. There we go. Everybody knows about fireballs, don't they? Fireball. Chance 3 plus range 30 centimetres. Target enemy loses 2 wounds. That seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? There's nothing like too crazy about that. Now, here we go. Raise dead. Chance 3 plus. Range mage. So it must be a per like a personal spell. Mage summons an undead with the following characteristics. LD, oh, so this is, hey, this looks uh, very similar to old Warhammer stats. So LD, 0, M15, WS6, S6, SP5, BS0, T6, W2, Permanent Fear. Okay, need to find a little explainer of the uh, statistics, I guess. Well, here we go. Leadership LD, movement in centimetres is M. WS is weapon skill, S is strength, SP is speed, BS is ballistic skill, toughness is T, wounds is W, cost is C. That's, I think lots of people can uh, identify with those characteristics. They're uh, pretty synonymous along, across uh, a lot of identifiable games without naming any specifics, shall we say. 
So some fantastic artwork in there. And uh, there's a couple of supplements that you can add into the base rules when we've had a little look. Different equipment that you can arm your characters with. Some more nice uh, art. Oh, little, lovely. They look great. So this would be £9 for the rules for the game. And it's a nice little hardback book, about A5 size-ish. Um, really great. Really great. Looks looks pretty cool. Definitely be having a read through that. And we might be having a, a game or two of this in store. Or well, we're definitely going to be having a game or two of this in store. Try it out. Um, right, what should we move on to? Let's have a look at some of these character figures. So we've got a... Uh, taped up. <laughs> no, one side. The taped on one side but not on the other side. So let's open open this little lady up. Ah, so she comes with a base. And uh, here we go. So she is a female human with sword. Now a lot of these character packs are £6.50. A couple of them are slightly more expensive and a couple of them are slightly cheaper. But this uh, figure would be perfect for anything really any kind of war game 28 millimeter war game if you didn't want to play their own the umbra tourist system uh, you could use this little lady in uh, any well she's got a bit of a uh, sculpted booty going on <laughs> but uh, yeah you could use use her in any kind of human army or fantasy you could use her as a character for a D, &D situation six pounds fifty She's, uh, she's pretty nice. You could use her as a possibly use her as a vampire or something, leading your army. Don't know. She's she's pretty nice. Pretty nice. I'm gonna say that a lot. Nice, cool. <laughs> so uh, let's stick her over there. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a elf ranger with a bow. So he's uh, got like a bit of a mohawk going on. The bow is nicely, uh, nicely molded. He's got plenty of equipment on. He's definitely more of a, a skirmish warrior player character type. His quivers there on the side. Just a nice one piece mini. One of the things that, uh, when we've had a good look through the range, seems to be a common theme are these, I don't know, Dyniax or something like that. I don't know how you pronounce it specifically, but they're uh, these little pumpkin headed chaps. So this one's a, uh, a particularly cool sculpt. I really like this guy with his little lantern and his sword. Yeah. Shall I zoom back in a little? Yeah. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, yeah, this this little chap, little pumpkin-headed chap, and there's a whole range of these. There's like some in armor and one with a bow and different uh, figures. But this little chap with his lantern, I think he's a lot of fun. I think there's a, uh, a faction based around these in the game. Is it? Oh. Hydrate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right, let's. Uh, Let's look at a couple more. What else have we got? Oh, and, then there's, and there's all these others. Right then, so we've got a. Uh, Do you want to see if, if putting the light on helps now it's got actually down? Yes. Bear with me a second while I find the light switch. Ah! Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that's no good, is it? <laughs> oh dear. We're all blind now. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm going to have to take him out of the blisters so you don't. Uh, Get blinded. So we've got this this chap. Here he is. Uh, he is a human with staff and skull. So like a little necromancer or something. He's uh, he's randomly got like a fish or a lizardy froggy thing stuck on the top of his staff. Skulls on the staff there look pretty nice. And he's holding a skull in his hand. This is a bit of uh, molding flash. So you clip that off. But uh, yeah, so he's another. Oh, and he's got a. <laughs> he's got a cape of 
uh, flesh, so with a, a face moulded onto it there. That's pretty interesting. Is uh, is quite cool. <laughs> yeah, it seems so. Uh, it seems so. Uh, right, what else have we got? Oh, this this guy's a lot of fun as well. I like this guy. Is uh, this little goblin, yeah, goblin with big feather? Yeah, I can see that All right. Oh, and now we're proper, yeah. proper shiny now, aren't we? What's going on? Yeah, goblin with big feather. He's described as so he's a, a little. Certainly got a big feather. Yeah, heavily armored goblin here, full chain mail. It's got a nice big spear and a shield, or a halberd and a shield, and a and a treasure chest to go with him. So, uh, and this massive feather on his hat. He's he's fun. Technical issues. And then uh, the last one of the characters that we've got is this is this female halfling. So this is a female halfling with axe. So she's got this massive battle axe, and she's wearing like I don't know what would you a garter. Yeah, she's got a garter on and a bit of like a fancy dress. So on the on their website image for this picture they've painted her uh, clothes as tartan and uh, it just looks like I don't know really bizarre would be a fantastic uh, player character mini for a, a RPG game it's, uh, it's pretty cool and uh, and she's a bit busty as well <laughs> so yeah she's funky so and then we're on to some of the conversion parts so they also do a whole range of conversion parts for popular sci-fi miniatures which you may or may not be familiar with so let's uh, we'll quickly scan through some of those oh i've missed i've missed some of the umbra tourist figures let's let's just we'll get those shown before we move on so what we've got here is a orc no, no. forgot about the light Talk, I've spoken for a minute, haven't I? Forgot. Right. You've got a massive on your finger, you? <laughs> you uh, it. So we've got this chap. This chap's uh, slightly more expensive, though, isn't it? Yeah, so he is... I've got him written down on my thing. So he would be £7.50. Uh, but we've got this massive burly orc with a, a big kind of stylized blunderbuss and a uh, cigar and a huge punk rockery hairstyle he would be perfect for something like Gorkamorka if anybody still plays Gorkamorka um, yeah I, uh, I can fully imagine this guy being used in a, a game of Gorkamorka he's uh, very reminiscent of older GW orcs about the right kind of size and style and everything he's, uh, he's spot on so this guy and then We've also got a dwarf druid, which I will whip out in a second. Mm. Okay, so can everybody see that? So this is a, a dwarf druid, and he is carrying this big kind of rock, which you would position there on his back, and uh, and then he's got his little staff, which, according to Spellcrow's product image, just glues on his base, kind of hanging off to one side. So he's like carrying the uh, the men here around a bit like is it called obelisk in uh, Asterix? And he carries the carries the men here's around for the druids. And, and this chap would be £7.50 as well. So, very nice. So let's move on to conversion parts, because they're pretty cool. Uh, so, we've got some guitars. So if you're doing a... Uh, oh, hold it like that so you can see. So if you are doing 
uh, orc rock band or uh, what are they called? Noise Marines, Spa like Chaos Space Marine, Noise Marines, Devotees of Slanesh or however, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can buy a pack of guitars and, uh, and they look pretty funky or use them for fantasy, whatever you wanted to do. And uh, a pack of guitars would cost you £4.70. Uh, the stylized a little bit chaosy actually with the, the bats and the little demon heads and the skulls and things, so they're maybe a little bit more interesting. Uh, we've got some legs, these are wolf knight or wolves knights legs. And uh, if you see in there, there's five different pairs of legs that you would use to pimp up your space brains with the appropriate iconography and uh, furs and bits and pieces on there. They look like they would be suitable for uh, original Space Marines rather than the Primaris stuff that has come out recently. And we've got some little... So these are Salamandra tabards and these are like little loinclothy bits that you would put on your Space Marines in on the across the waistband or whatever to make them look a little bit more interesting. And these have all got like the dragon scale type stuff on. There's five different designs and two sprues of, so you get those. Now the legs, this is where the pricing seems a little out of whack. So the pack of legs would be £6.50, but this pack of tabards would also be £6.50. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> And then there is some cloaks. So you get a pack of cloaks and it's got six fur cloaks in, whether they're wolves or bears or, bears or whatever. Uh, but six cloaks would also be £6.50. But they do look very nice. Uh, and then my... Oh, no, not, I'm not going to show you my favourite yet. Uh, we've got some we've got some plague marks. So these are kind of Nurgle-esque boils and faces. I don't know if you can see those, all right? Like demonic -y faces that you would have growing out of things. And uh, I think I'm going to have to open it just to show you because that bit's back to front. Oh, we've got a different, different advert on the back of there. Purple Warlock Twisted Miniature Magazine. Okay, uh, so there's two different sprues in here, and again, this would be uh, where are we? Plague marks uh, five pounds sixty one. So there's there we go. So there's two sprues in there with all these different uh, boils and things on there, little pustules, suitable for any uh, demonic or nurgleized miniatures. And now I get to, now I'll show you my favourite out of all the bits because if you've watched any of our YouTube videos before where I talk about orcs, I tell everybody how much I like orcs because they're uh, fun and cool. So we've got these, and this is an upgrade pack just for orcs, and these are orc freebooter heads. So there's two sprues of the same. And these are pirate orc heads, which uh, were just crazy, just bonkers, really. Back to the original days when I was collecting metal orcs from Games Workshop, and you used to be able to buy freebooters for your space orc army. Uh, and unfortunately, you can't get them anymore. But now you can convert your own with a f like these cool-looking parts and. How much fun are they with the worm pipe thing hanging out of his mouth and the eye patch? Yeah, chat agrees that they're pretty fun. Yeah, they are. I, I, I think definitely. Um, and orc heads, where have we got? Freebooter heads, they would be £6.50 as well. But I think that I would quite happily pay that for a bit of nostalgia and uh, being able to customise my orc miniatures. With, uh, with something a bit different. Right then, so let's move on to uh, the other stuff. So this range, the Argatoria range, we've got a couple of packs of, and these are, 
right, hold them like that so you can see. In fact, I'm going to get them out. I'm going to get them out so you can see. So these are 10 millimeter, I believe. Does it say on there? It doesn't, does it? So, th so these are 10 millimeter, I think, uh, fantasy minis. So the idea is that you base them in like pairs on the on the little bases. So these are Amazons, and so this is a, a different game system that they produce, which is a, a fantasy war games or skirmish game for war bands. So this is the uh, Amazon Warriors pack, and this would be six pounds fifty for these eight small figures. And they look really good. They're nicely detailed and uh, not too much flash on there. So obviously you've got like some uh, molding contact points and what have you. But they look pretty cool. If you uh, if you fancy, I don't know how they would compare with some of like the cobblestone 10 mil stuff or Pendragon do a, a range of 10 mil fantasy figures. So these might stack up pretty nicely with those. Or you could just buy a whole whole army of these guys but they look pretty uh, pretty funky let's shove those over there and I'll just show you some of the others so these are reptilian warriors big kind of lizard styles with uh, these big fins down their backs that's like the warrior pack and there's several packs available for each faction this is the barbarian warrior command now they're slightly more expensive because they've got banners and stuff in there let's Let's just crack those out and we'll have a little review. For some reason, they come with round. These guys come with round bases rather than square bases. Maybe that's because they're command. I don't know. So the 10 millimeter, I believe. But this is the command sprue. So you still get eight figures, but there's possibly a little more detail in there. Uh, so they're a little bit more expensive. Eight pound eighty for some command figures. Okay. But they're really nice, like the, the mould quality and everything is great. So, if we were going to stock these in the store, maybe this range might not be something that we go with straight away, unless there was demand for it, but they are really nice. What's, uh, what do you all think? And then these are the half giants, so this is a pack of four figures. Which, uh, where's, where's our, so half giants, and that's them compared to the Amazon, so they're like twice the height of the Amazon figures. So you get four giants in a pack for £6.50, with a variety of different weapons. What I really like about these is that even though there's, they're so small, that they're all individual sculpt figures, so you could probably get a couple of packs of these and not have any duplicates of... of Sorry. So say you get the Amazons and then the Amazon command, you'd have like 16 figures and none of them would be the same, which is something that small scale games always tend to suffer from, I think. Uh, so yeah, Half Giants, pretty good. We like those. And then we're nearly there, nearly at the end. We've got, uh, we've got a couple of their little scenic items to show you. He doesn't want to go back in the pack. So here we've got the Tathia Organic Swamp. So let's, uh, what would be nice? I'm just going to slice that across. Slice it across there, I think. So we can get this out. So this is a nice big chunk of resin, and this would be a £6.50 item. So whether you use that as some kind of uh, Tyranid scenery piece or a, a uh, and it's quite, it's quite thick, it's quite meaty. Yeah, so I don't know if there was a starter pack of pumpkin uh, guys. Can I just have your ruler a second? Oh, of course you can. I'll let it because I'm nice like that. Thank you. So just to give you an idea, this thing is uh, approximately approximately four inches by three inches and uh, whoa, 
three quarters of an inch thick. So it's quite a, a big chunk. So it's got like this nice bubble swamp surface to it or bubbling pool surface with a bit of fungus and stuff on there. So whether you use that as a, a scenic base or you use it as a terrain piece, that's, uh, that's good, nice, solid as well. So drop, drop molded resin, I think. There. And then the other item scenery wise that we've got is Mrs. MLG and I had a little discussion about this earlier on. Uh, these two, which are described on the packet as stone fences. Now, can you have a stone fence or is it a wall? But, or is that a language barrier uh, thing? I, I don't know. But uh, these look pretty good. So again, these would be £6.50. So it's £6.50 for two pieces. And they're just like walls or barricades. This one's got a little barrel piece in there and they butt up quite nicely against each other so if you're playing on a small playing surface two foot by two foot or something similar you wouldn't need many pieces of scenery to uh, decorate your table these look these look very nice might uh, get those painted up at some point and add them to our scenery collection in the store and then finally finally we've got a little card game that they produce. So we're going to open one of those and we'll show you the cards and see what we think to that. So that is the Dyniac Weird Treasures card game. So this is a game for two to five aubergines, I think, uh, and takes 20 pumpkins duration. And suitable for ages 8 plus. So let's open this little chap up and see what's in here. So what it says on the back, oh the cards are small, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so the inhabitants of the secret garden are called Dyniac, I think that's how you pronounce it. They constantly set off to dangerous places facing extraordinary creatures and magic. A dynamic card game for you and your friends. Help the mysterious Dyniac to collect the cucubits, trade with other players and Arrange the required amount of fruit and throw what you don't need. 111 cards, 100 cucubit cards, 5 dyniac cards and 4 crows, 1 ho hole card and 1 twinkle card, 1 instruction and the dyniac legend. Right, let's, have a, let's have a little look here. So we've got a, a rules leaflet that shows us what to do. How to win. The player who collects all the required cucubits in his pouch wins at the end of the cycle if there is a tie with another player who has also collected the set the number of pretty one cards in the bag determines the victory whoever has more pretty ones wins okay so might have to have a game of this with little miss mlg and see if we can uh, figure it out so we've got pumpkin cards we've got a twinkle card I'm first. All right. I, yeah. Okay. And a ho hole card, which is that looks like a uh, uh, kind of weird haystack looking thing. Right. And then let's have a quick look through these. What have we got? We've got a crow, secretis. So these are your uh, fruits, I guess. Nightmaris, Grimion, Furyx. And Darkus, so they're the they're the like player cards, and then you've got Pretty One Pumpkins, Freshy Pumpkins, Weirdo Pumpkins, Rotty Pumpkins, Pretty One Courgettes, yeah, Freshy, Weirdo, Rotty. So how much is this game? So this would be, where are we? I've written it down on my list. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't see it now. Oh, there we go. So this is £8.80, this little card game. Patty pans. What's a patty pan? One of them yeah. Aubergines. Squashes. This looks like it could be a fun little game. We'll have to have a, we'll have to have a play of this in a minute. When we finish on the stream. So I just wanted to see what the variance was. So they're standard things. So they look pretty cool. Uh, we're going to have a game of this. We're going to see what that's like. 
What do you all think of the miniatures? The. Uh... <laughs> You're frozen over there. Yeah, I was just reading the. <laughs> I was just just reading the chat. Building an ex someone building the extension to their house and then when getting in trouble for it, they turn around and go, nah mate, that's it. Yeah, I like it, yeah. Yeah. I like it. So yeah, we're gonna have a, a good look at those. So we've we've given you a swift tour sorry, we've given you a swift tour of all the uh, the figures that we've got in our our demo box and a quick look through the rule book and it all seems quite reasonably priced. Um what do you think? The the quality of the resin looks great. Would you like to see this as a range that we stock in store at Mighty Lancer Games and online at uh, mightylancergames.co.uk? Uh, please let us know. Uh, tell us what you think. What do you think? You well, I, well, I think they look great. I'm like excited to explore the range what, and see what else. Uh, do you think the 28 mil would be the first thing that we would get? I think yeah. I think I think the the 28 mil stuff, the Umbra tourist figures, would be what we stock. Primarily, uh, with a selection of the um, upgrade parts, like the orc parts and some of these Space Marine compatible items and what have you, that we'd probably look at stocking some of those initially. And uh, like we do with all of our other ranges, that every time we place an order, that we would probably order a few more items and expand the range slowly until we've got everything. Um, but yeah, I I think they look I think they look pretty great. I think it looked pretty awesome. Uh, I'm excited. I was really excited when the box came yesterday because it was like, oh, like kidding the sweet shop. But uh, I didn't. I wasn't expecting like this little card game. That's that's a lot of fun. And the uh, we've lost it here. And this miniature game for like the rules for nine quid for this beautiful little hardback book. Uh, I'm well impressed with that, and I'm gonna have a good read through and see what that looks like. And, uh, and we'll definitely be playtesting this in the store to see what we think for uh, some of our local local players. And then we'll we'll give you like a little review video and stuff and tell you what we think of that when we get to it. But yeah, yeah, uh, the before, aren't they? yeah, oh yeah, like the little starter sets. So have you got the uh, the page of what the starter sets are available? Oh, I do it. So we. Right. Yeah. Let us just check on our uh, really information. Give me a clue. Right, see, uh, one player set. Let me search for one player set. Okay, so uh, I don't know. What What are your favourite items out of what we've shown off so far? I, uh, I particularly like the orcs, but I'm a bit of a sucker for orcs. So this uh, this chap and the orc heads, I think like they're definitely going to find a home. So you can get halflings, hobgoblins, start to play gnomes, which is a rule book and various terrain and gnomes, etc. Right. Start to play hobgoblins, which is the same kind of thing, but hobgoblins. Mm -hmm. Wood elves. And I think that's it. Cool. So there's maybe like four starter sets available and then you would, if you wanted a different uh, war band, then you would make it up out of single figures. But uh, having a quick flick through here, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to use whatever miniatures you wanted for this game. You know, okay, so long as they fit within kind of the rough guidelines of the uh, races. Let's just shove, shove that stuff up there. So you've got races. You've got humans, elves, dwarves, orcs, black orcs, half giants, dark fawns, goblins, halflings, Targaryens. Vorax, Hobgoblins and Gnomes. So let's just have a look. Humans, Standard. Elf, Standard. Dwarves. Yeah, Dwarves and Orcs, they're pretty uh, normal. Goblins, Halflings, Half Giants. So like ogre types. Dark Fawns would be your Beastmen. Hobgoblins. Vorax are... Uh, uh, kind of like Birdmen. Oh, what what was that guy called that was on He-Man that was the uh, <laughs> the bird guy? But if you remember He-Man from like when we were all kids 30 years ago, uh, there was a bird guy and I can't remember what it was called, but he looks very similar to that. 
and Tigerians, he's, uh, he's like a tiger man, or uh, like cat folk, if you like, and uh, yeah, they all look pretty cool. No reason why you couldn't use generic fantasy figures from uh, Reaper or WizKids or any of the other multitude of, of retailers out there. Not Well, not retailers, because in terms of retailers, you want to come to Mighty Lancer Games, but uh, manufacturers, that's the word I was looking for. So the, the pumpkin guy, he seems to be just... It's more like a mascot type on, on thing. On his own, though. But there's quite a few. Yeah. There's, even, there's even a bus. Oh, yeah. That oven. yeah, that looks really nice. That looks cool. But yeah, yeah. There's, there's all sorts. He's even dressed as a knight. That would be cool. That looks like our logo, but for a pumpkin man. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe we, should, uh, maybe we should get something like that. Right, change, change us to a pumpkin. Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> awesome. Maybe for Halloween. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, we, we, I've, I've talked a lot um, at you all and waved a load of things in front of the camera. Um, Everyone seems to be uh, agreeing with us. That yeah. They, they like them more, more the, again, more the toy eight, you know. Yeah. And maybe some of the orc conversion bits rather than, rather than the, the ten, rather than the small ones. Yeah. Yeah. I like those, uh, those stone fences and things. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're all right. yeah, well, yeah, they're great. They're great. So, um, I guess we kind of round it up. They look fantastic. We'll have a go at maybe uh, painting some. What about if we did like a giveaway and we could like do some kind of thing so where we could... Planned at all. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's just a kid. It just popped into my head, but oh, that yeah. seems like cool. We, maybe we'll organise some kind of giveaway where uh, we'll we'll do some kind of raffle. No, not a raffle. We're not allowed to do raffles, are we? Prize draw. Hey, you ain't got a gambling license, my guys. Okay, so we'll do... You, you, uh, could we'll, always, you could always do when you get to so many subscribers or so many followers. That's, that's a good idea. So what we'll do is when we get to 100 followers, because we're like some of the way there. Yeah, so when we get to 100 followers on, uh, on Twitch... Uh, we're going to give some of this stuff away, I think. So we'll, <laughs> All uh, of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just uh, like spare of the moment, isn't it? So yeah, well, let's let's give some figures away um, from the stuff that we've shown off. So when we get to 100 followers on Twitch, so tell everyone you know that uh, you do. And if you're on our follower list, we'll randomly select a name and we'll organise to send you a few bits and pieces. How's that? <laughs> That's what you want. Yay! Is that a pumpkin guy? Though, I'm gonna it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Pumpkin guy spoken for, and uh, yeah, well, might be a couple of other bits and pieces that we uh, go into our pile of shame. But uh, certainly, some of these figures are uh, up for grabs when we get to a hundred followers. So uh, yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. So uh, thanks everyone for watching. <laughs> Um, yeah, awesome. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for taking time out to uh, watch us show you off some stuff. And uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Are you lying?